What's going on guys, Tosker here and in this video we are going to be covering data triggers. Data triggers can be applied to data templates to make certain changes under certain conditions. Now if you watched my iValue converter videos you would know that we've used converters in the past to do something similar. For example, uh, here in our design we have a simple list view with a collection of certain types of warnings, safe, caution, danger, and lethal. Now as I mentioned, we would normally use uh, value converters to do this because uh, this is based off of an enum. So we would send it to a converter and say, all right, well if the enum value is safe, send back a green brush, uh, caution, maybe yellow, danger, orange, and then lethal red. Now I'm a bit ashamed to admit that uh, I just recently found out about this, so I'm kind of excited too, and I wanted to show you guys. So let's jump into what's going on here. First I set up an application. Uh, if you want to follow along, I set up a data context to a list view model that I created. And then we have a grid with a margin of 50 that I made with a list view within it that then binds to an item source uh, called warning collection in our view model. Now I'm going to go over to our view model so you can take a look. And here's what we have. We just have a little enum here for types of warnings. Uh, we then have our view model which has an observable collection. You could use a list if you want. We're not really doing any changing, uh, property changing here. And then in the constructor I just instantiate a bunch of values. Now back over to our view. What we want is, is like I mentioned, we want to change the colors here and then perhaps have a border around each item. Now in order to use data template triggers, uh, we want to go over here to our app.xaml. And over here in application resources, we want to create a data template for a list view item. If you're not familiar with data templates, I believe that I have a video on that as well. Link should be in the description if I do. So here we're just going to set up a warning template. And the first thing we want to do is set up an item template. This will be composed of a simple border and text block. So we just have a simple border here with the thickness of the text block. You see that we're binding here in our application resources. So we're just going to set the text to the value of whatever we're binding to. In this case it'll be an enum. Now we later want to actually refer to these elements to change certain values within them. So of course we're going to want to give them a name. We'll give the name of underscore border to the border. And then a name of underscore text block to the text block. Now the interesting part here is when we get over to what we're going to put here are our triggers. And we can set this up by calling data template dot triggers. And then in here we just want to set up some new data triggers. So we'll call data trigger binding. And we're just going to call binding. So we're going to be binding to uh, whatever the value of the item is. And then we're going to see uh, if this state is the value called safe. So this data trigger will invoke changes under the condition that this binding has a value of safe. And then in here, just like we normally set styles, we're just going to call a setter and set uh, certain style values. So here on our triggers, we just uh, once we get the condition here, we're then going to call the setter and we're going to call the for we're going to set the foreground to the value of green and the target name. So we're setting this of the text block element that we have named up here. And we do the same for the border and we get its border brush property here and set it to green. So we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to change the values to all the enum values that we have and then of course change the values that we want for that condition. So I cut the video and here we have for caution we did the value of gold, danger we're doing orange red, and then for lethal we're just doing red. So now that we set up data template triggers we want to go over to our main window here, we want to go down to our XAML to our list view, and then of course we want to get the item template property uh, we're going to get it from our static resource here where we named it warning template and just to make colors a little easier we're going to change the background color here 
and then I'm just going to paste in a custom value here. You can put in black if you want. And now if we look up here at our designer, you can see that we have our data template triggers working. So basically we're just changing the values of properties here using data template triggers. So all the property values are being determined in the data template instead of needing to go over here, create a value converter, uh, put it in our application resources, come down here, uh, get the binding of our items, and then using a converter on the value. Now you may be asking, why should we use value converters at all? And if you take note over here, if we go back, uh, we can only do equality conditions. So we can only check the binding and then see if this is the value. Check the binding and see if this specific value is the value. So if there are circumstances where we need to find out if something is greater than or less than or conditions that are more dynamic rather than just set values, uh, then we would actually probably have to go over and use a converter. And keep in mind, sometimes we may want to use value converters across all types of controls. And in this case, for example, we would just have a data type for a list view item. Uh, so we would have to recreate this data template and then re-add in all the data triggers for all the controls we want to use it. So in that case as well, I would think that we would want to use a value converter. But anyways, guys, hopefully that came out to a quick video. I'll find out after I'm done editing. But I hope you guys found this useful. So like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And ultimately, thank you for watching.